All right, guys, so as you can see in front of you here, uh, my two-wheel balance scooter or hoverboard, whatever you guys are calling it these days, it's pretty beat up. Um, and uh, I've seen a lot of videos on how to protect your scooter with some 3M kind of rubber foam. Um, some of the scooters actually come in with some, uh, with some foam covering uh, the wheels where you can see are the most scratched up on mine. Uh, I thought I'd do a little bit differently though. Um, I decided it's time for a new paint job and what better way than to protect the scooter than with some truck bed lining. Um, so uh, just a warning, I'm not a painter. Uh, I'm, no, I'm no construction man so I'm not exactly 100% sure if I'm doing this right but I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, I got a little sandpaper there to kind of scratch down the plastic. Uh, maybe even it out a little bit, add some pores so that the plastic primer will be able to grab it a little bit easier. Uh, I'll lay the primer down and then I will uh, lay the truck bed down in a couple different coats. Uh, you see I've got some tape there as well. I'm going to tape up obviously the, the paddles and uh, the lights and some of the other pieces that I do not want um, painted. So uh, here we go. Alright, so I'm going to start with the uh, sandpaper, just kind of sand it down. Uh, never really done this before. Um, I heard that sandpaper helps the uh, primer and or paint kind of grab to the plastic. So here we go. I'll go ahead and uh, just kind of kill the video for now. This is going to take a while. So I'll see you guys here in a little bit. As you can see, I've got it pretty well sanded down, except for, of course, the paddles and the uh, the light indicators. Um, obviously, next step is going to be to take a uh, washcloth or some kind of sponge or something, get all the uh, the extra powder out of there. Uh, I'll probably, of course, get some of that dirt off and stuff like that. But after we get it cleaned up, then we will tape it up. <clears throat> all right, now we've got the whole thing sanded down. Um, I'm going to use a uh, kind of a warm, wet rag with some soap on it just to get all this dust and stuff off. Okay, got, a, got it soaked down, cleaned off, um, dried off a little bit. I think it'll be easier if I uh, remove these bottom panels here. Easier to paint, easier to tape off. Uh, so we'll do that now. Got a Phillips screwdriver here. There's probably, oh, looks like 10 screws on each plate. So here we go. Be all the screws. And we've got this light here, so probably gonna be a cable somewhere. Let's see. That looks like a pretty simple cable. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, don't really want to get up to zoom it in, but you can pop this cable right off. And there you go. Okay, that's one, now we'll do the other. Okay, I've got the uh, panel with the charger and power button on it. Obviously, as you can see, there's uh, a couple more cables, one for the charger, one for the power button, and of course, one for the LED. Uh, same thing, there's just clips on here. The charging port and the power button uh, plugs are different, so it's hard to mess this up here. Only one's gonna fit in one. Uh, and of course, the light's the same on the other, so I'm gonna pull these off. So on the, uh, the charging uh, plug on the, on the board here, it's a little bit harder to get in between here. There's a couple capacitors here. Uh, so you don't want to stick your finger in there and try to pull it out. I don't know much about uh, electronics, but I know you don't want to probably stick anything metal down there to get it out. I happen to have this little plastic tool from an iPhone kit, so I'll try to pull this out with this. And that did it. All right, got both pieces off here. Um, we're gonna start taping up and get ready to prime. All right, so as you can see, you've got the uh, LEDs taped up, um, the power and uh, or the charger and the power button. 
Uh, I've got the pads covered, the light indicators covered up. I stuck a few layers of tape here in the uh, in the center here. That of course is where it goes back and forth. I didn't since we're doing the uh, truck bed liner. I didn't want chunks to get in there and it you know add some friction. Um, in hindsight, taking the bottoms off made taping uh, the bottom more difficult. I had to cover up all the engine parts and everything. Um, still though, I think I, I like the idea of taking the bottom off because I don't want to spray the top and then have to roll it over to spray the bottom. Um, I guess I could set it on its side or something like that, but just to avoid anything like that, I stuck with leaving them off and then spend some time taping up with uh, some uh, little contact paper and uh, just duct tape to hold it all together. So I'll be spraying at a downward angle so nothing should get up in there anyways. Uh, at least I hope not. So anyways, that being said, uh, I think it's time to head to the garage to do some painting. See you guys there. All right guys, uh, lighting is absolutely terrible in here. Um, and I just want to let you guys know one more time, I am not a painter. Um, I've never really spray painted a whole lot of anything. I just learned one time that you're supposed to kind of brush to and fro, um, not stay in one spot. Do basically we're going to do a layer, let it dry for a little bit, do another layer, let it dry for a little bit, and then uh, we'll probably start throwing on the truck bed liner. So here goes nothing. <clears throat> back in 15-20 uh, minutes, throw another coat on. Alright, we're back for the second coat. Coat number two is done. We'll be back here a little bit for the truck bed liner. All right, it is now time for the truck bed coating. Um, why I chose this brand over others, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you why. It's the only one they hacked the hardware store I went to, so uh, nothing special about this brand in particular. Uh, but. We're gonna hope for the best here. I've never done any kind of truck bed mining, so I know it goes on a little thick, so we gotta be careful with that, but here we go. Well, already I can tell you, I was expecting more texture out of this. Uh, it appears to be a little bit smoother than I thought it would be, but that's not a terrible thing. It will help from stuff getting caught in the wheels and things like that. Uh, what we're really going for here is a more durable paint job. So, all right, on to the body.
it looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna do coat number two here. Uh, I'll probably end up doing three coats total. Uh, I'm not gonna film the last few coats, but I uh, just want you to know I'm about to start coat number two. I'll probably end up doing three, and then uh, we'll put it all back together and see how it looks. See you guys here in a little bit. All right, as you can see, we're back inside. We've got the uh, entire scooter and bottom panels painted. Uh, you can see, see if the lighting's all right here. Uh, it's got a, a real matte black, a rough texture. Uh, that texture obviously is that truck bed coating, um, which is really the exact look I was going for. I was nervous at first that it was gonna be too glossy, uh, but when it dried, it actually uh, got a lot more matte black, which is really the exact look uh, that uh, we wanted here. So. I'm a little nervous about taking the, the tape off here, um, but uh, let's take it off and see how it looks. All right, so far so good. Uh, nothing, uh, none of the paint's ripped off with any of the tape yet. Uh, I almost got a little impatient and took the tape off uh, last night. I'm glad I waited. Uh, I think it gave that extra probably 12 to 14 hours worth of time for it to uh, to set, kept the paint from ripping, uh, ripping off with the tape. So I highly recommend that. Uh, let's take the bottom off and make sure the wheels still work and the uh, engine isn't shot. there all right now we'll put the panels back on Right, that is the final screw. Uh, one thing of note, this is plastic. You're screwing plastic into plastic. Uh, be careful not to over tighten. You could break uh, some of the plastic bearings or some of the plastic uh, holders in there. Um, I think it turned out actually really nice. I'll give you some close-ups here in a second, but uh, actually let's make sure it turns on first before we call it a win. Good start. Oh, I'm out of battery. But, as you can see, it works. Uh, only other thing to note is, at one point during uh, my painting, uh, instead of it actually setting perfectly straight like this, it actually tilted a little bit, and it and uh, these these crevices here, they kind of they kind of hold paint if you spray too much in there. And I noticed on the, the time it rolled forward, I got a little bit of drip here. You can't really see it in the video too much, um, but there was some drip on these two corners, so I'd say watch out for that. Other than that, I think this thing uh, turned out pretty sick. Uh, it's got a nice rough texture to it. I think it'll handle spills a little bit better. Uh, I think the paint job that they put on um, out of the factory is pretty weak to begin with. It's like one layer, no prime or nothing. Uh, they just take an airbrush, probably run it right through. I don't think it's dipped or anything. It might be dipped. It might be plastic dipped. Either way, uh, I think this is going to end up being a lot better paint job, a lot tougher, a lot sleeker, makes yours unique. Um, I don't know. I'm excited about it. I uh, appreciate you guys watching my video. Uh, I'd say like and subscribe to my channel, but I don't really post many videos. I just thought this would be helpful to, uh, to post. So you guys have a good rest of your day.